stand close by your side. We will teach you survival hurdle. You'll be there to turn the tide. Though 10,000 come against you in the battle for the right. Under my divine direction, you'll have victory for the right. Oh, I'll be with you in the battle.
thankful to be here today. Glad. Glad I was on time today. Bless his name. <laughs> Raise didn't get me today. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the church today. I just got one thing to say. You know, I don't want to play Russian roulette with time. I don't want to, I don't want to gamble with my time I have here on this earth. But I want to give God all I can while I can. I don't want to think I got time to come get to get back. But I don't want I don't want to gamble with time. I wouldn't advise you to do the same. So I want to bless his name today. I want to give him glory today. I don't want to wait for tomorrow. I don't want to think there's more in front of me, but I want to give them all I can yes, while I can. Yes. So I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad we got victory today yes. in the battle. Yes. And he's here to survive hard hurdles. Yes. Hey, man, even the little hurdles, you can jump over those too. Yes. And big hurdles. Still a hurdle. Still a hurdle. So I'm just glad. Today. I'm glad to be in church today. Yes. I'm glad God touched my mind so many years back. And allow me to keep my mind all these years to stay here. Mm. Kept my mind and be That's part right. of the church. Yeah, to man. keep me on the potter's wheel as yeah, I what the gave us. He's yeah. kept me on the potter's wheel. Yeah, He's kept me on the wheel. Yeah. Wasn't any doing of mine. But it's of his mercy. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's of his mercy that we're not consumed. Right. Right. So I'm appreciative today. I'm glad for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. for the Spirit of God. Yeah. I'm glad for the message of the body of Christ. Yeah. I'm glad for the message of perfection. Yeah. We're going on to perfection. Hallelujah. I'm done. Praise God. Praise God. This is on my mind today is uh, Brother Desi was talking about time and time that we uh, spent for God and things. And, and uh, when I come to church now, that, that was on my mind was was uh, thinking back over my life and how much time that I have wasted. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, there was a, a preacher that, uh, that was on the radio or something years ago called a Bourbon Street uh, preacher or Bourbon Street minister or whatever down in New Orleans. And, and he always sung this song that was on my mind a while ago was Wasted Years. Wasted Years. Oh, how foolish. Um, you know, look back on, you know, everything we, we could have been, you know, and we can't we can't turn back the time you know we can't say oh I'd, I'd love to go back 30 years and i would with all the knowledge i have now and the things god has showed me uh i could go back 30 years and be i'd be real happy but we can't do that and uh all we can do now is look forward and make best use of the time we have now because that's all we got left we've done wasted the rest of it and uh you know, you can, anybody here can probably look back and see where somewhere down the line, boy, that was really, that was really foolish. I really, I really should have thought that through better, you know. And, uh, and I'm glad that, that God is showing me that. And I know that, that now that I've got to make the best use of my time now and try to make it count. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Appreciate the Lord. Serve the Lord for a mighty long time. I ain't got tired yet. Don't plan on getting tired. I appreciate that song. He said that will be with you in the battle. He'll teach you. Serve out hurdles. And then on, under my, direct, my divine direction, uh, you'll have victory. Amen. Under his divine direction. So I appreciate the Lord. Appreciate that song. Appreciate being here today. Amen. And like as he said, we want to give it all to the Lord, all our time, all our energies. It all belongs to the Lord. We've got to put him first. We were saying last night. Amen. You know that that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, Ephesian church there, I believe it was, he was talking to the Ephesus. Yeah, he, I think he was talking to the angel of Ephesus. And he said he knew their works and they were doing some good things. Man, but they left their first love. He had that epistle, you know, they left off their first love, which is Jesus. He's got to be first in our life. God and Jesus got to be first in our life, no matter what. Amen. And so uh, I want to serve him. How about you? A couple scriptures here. And uh, I got this this morning. I felt it. very appropriate. The 25th chapter of Psalms, part of my daily bread. But I feel like to share this. 
I really looked at this like I've, I've read a lot of times. How many of you read the Bible a lot of times, all of a sudden, it just, wow. And this just really stood out to me today. First verse says, Unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. And uh, I studied that word out, wait. And uh, at the end of the, the Strong's there, it says to wait for, to wait on, to wait upon. Amen. And so we're to wait for the Lord. We expect from the Lord, but we're to wait on the Lord. We're, you know, I, I remember old movies. You see these old movies and they got these households and rich folks. They got servants and and servants are very attentive to their masters. A lot of time they're waiting for instruction. Once they get the instruction, they immediately serve. They, they wait on their master. Amen. And so whatever God has for me, I, I want to wait on him. I, I want to I wanna wait not only for him. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And that's that same word in the same context. Word wait. There's a lot of weights in here. Amen. Waiting. W-A-I-T. W-A-I-T. Yeah. Waiting on the Lord and some, you know, using different. But in these contexts here, it means to wait for the Lord, but to wait on the Lord. To wait upon the Lord. And that's why we're here to serve him. We're to wait on the Lord. Whatever he desires, that should be our desire. Amen. We should give him what he wants at any given time. Fifth verse says, Thou preparest a table. Excuse me. I lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Boy, I want to take advantage of that, don't you? I want to wait on the Lord all the day long. And then the 21st verse says, uh, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. And then in closing, in the 50. Fifty-second chapter of Psalms. In the eighth verse says, uh, "I am like a green olive tree in the house of God." Green meaning life. I want to be a healthy tree. I've got plan to be here. I want to be healthy. Amen. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. So stuff. Amen. In God. And then he says, "I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever." I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. God done a lot of things for me. God done a lot of things for us. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. I will be a faithful servant. I want to wait on the Lord patiently. Amen. And I want to wait on him. I want to serve him properly. Amen. Because we're all called to be servants. And, and we're, we're, we're to be uh, uh, Christ full and selfless. Uh -huh. We're to be Christ serving, not self serving. Amen. We've been bought with a price. Our lives are not our own. And the Bible says that, uh, therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. So we're God's property. Amen. And it's our duty, Brother Jazzy, to be here on time. Just a reasonable service. Yes, sir. Amen. And Terry was reading some things to me about the house of God and why we're here. We're commanded to be here. The Bible said, forsake not to summon yourself together as a matter of some is. I got to be here. Amen. Because God planted me here. Amen. And I want to hear from God. How about you? Amen. Amen. So teach me, Lord, to wait on you properly. Amen. And to serve you and to serve your people. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God. God.
I'm going to try to sing this. I don't have the music with me or anything, but I'm going to try at least do the first verse, if well, not the second. Um, Calvary's the reason why I don't have the music. Calvary's the reason why I don't have the music. But the most important thing is this, this first verse pertains to everybody here, and uh, that's the most important one. <laughs> I was lost, but you knew where to find me. I was hungry, you were bread for my soul. I was thirsty, and you gave living water. You were my shelter when I had no place to go. That's why sometimes I just want to praise you.
Okay, we're thankful for Calvary. Yes, sir. That's the reason why we're, we're here today. It's because of because of Calvary. And, uh, I'm thankful for the service today, <clears throat> and thankful for uh, uh, opening songs. There's a making mention of uh, the time and of course not playing Russian roulette with time. I thought that was fitting and and uh, then feel of course following in reference to wasting of time because uh, we as a people has a tendency to do that. And more so even now things are fixed where we can waste a lot of more time than ever ever before. And uh, made mention of he was 30 years younger. And I said, God, exactly, Brother Gunther said it, and I said, yep, I'm talking about 30 years younger with what I have information on right now. Right, right, right. The sense that I have, or the sense that I think I have right now. Amen. I don't want to be just 30 years younger with the same mind that I had 30 years ago. Amen. That's right. And, uh, I thought that's what happens with most human beings is that I got time. You know, you get into a race and you feel like I got time to to do this here. Uh, and, and it's called procrastination. Which is one of the worst nations beside lying nation that it, it is uh, to procrastinate, putting off of what you can do right now. I just heard a scripture in my mind, it's Romans 13 and uh, verse 10, which says, uh, knowing the time. Uh, 13 and 10, knowing the time that it's high time to wake out of sleep. That might be the 11th verse, yes. Knowing the time, it's time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we we believe. So time here is uh, of the essence. Paul was writing this in that to that early church and he felt the urgency uh, of time then. And of course, their time was closing out. Their age was closing out. Uh, their period of 40, that dispensation was closing out. The Bible dispensation is 40 years of the Bible dispensation. And uh, <clears throat> it was closing out. And so he knew it was time to to awake out of sleep. And most folks don't know they sleep. That's what happens. It's like everything else in our natural progression of life you can be sitting there reading a book and next time you know you sleep you could be flipping the television or whatever and next time you know you sleep you could just doing something that you relax and before you know it you sleep and uh, next thing you know is when you wake up that man you know wife, I don't know. you know woke up and Paul has uh, probably, and most of any other writer, he uh, constantly cautioned them in 1 Thessalonians 5, and I'm coming back to Romans 13, but 1 Thessalonians 5 and uh, verse 1, he, he told them, but of the time and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Or yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He was writing to a church that had been taught. He was writing to an educated church who has been taught the word of God and taught that certain thing was going to uh, transpire, take place. 
And he says, uh, for when they say this, he's telling you, he's giving you some markers. He said, for when they say safe, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. It's kind of like the pains of a woman that start taking place, and, and for you know it, uh, that child is, is birth, and labor pains. And so we can see certain things. If you pay any attention in, uh, to society right now, it's uh, right there constant in front of us that uh, so many signs are letting us know that uh, there's going to be a closing out of an uh, age or a world. Age and world is the synonymous term in the Bible. Uh, the age the, the 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 world or the age yes, sir. that exists and of course the noadic world or age closed out with a flood the Jewish world closed out with Titus and his soldiers destroying Jerusalem and this age is going to close out with World War three Armageddon is going to close out this age and so he's telling us that certain things is going to to uh, take place, and when they cry peace and safety, these pains, these these signs, uh, these labor pains that's taking place is letting you know that something is going to be birthed, something that's going to take place. But he goes on in the first fourth verse says, "For but you brethren are not in darkness, that uh, they should overtake you as a thief." These was taught people, and not only was they taught people, they was people that who had been taught and had put things into practice in their life. It's a difference. A lot of people have been taught but putting what they've been taught into practice is two different things. Yes, sir. I said being taught and putting into practice what they've been taught is two different things. He that know to do good and doeth not to him is sin. Is sin. Uh, that ye should not overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light uh, and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. See, Paul in Romans 13, 10 says that uh, awake out of sleep. So he's telling the church that he says that you are aware of the times and the seasons. You are aware of what is going to take place. And then he said, therefore, let us not do what you know not to do. Let us not sleep. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Don't let us be intoxicated with the affairs of this world. Don't let us be uh, uh, intoxicated with the influence of this world. He says, but let us who are of the day, he referencing the people that's of Christ, of the day, the light. Let us do something. Be, uh, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. But God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has not appointed us to us to to be uh, destroyed in this uh, uh, bloodbath that's coming up. But if we sleep, we can find ourselves in that bloodbath. Yes, sir. Back here in uh, Romans 13 and verse 10, it says, uh, uh, verse, verse uh, uh, 12, we read verse 11, knowing the time, knowing the time. That's the key, knowing, having a relationship with time, staying up on time. Yeah. It's high time to wake out of whatever sleep you're in, whatever ignorance you are in, whichever unawareness you are in. It's time to come out of that uh, for your salvation or your uh, 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 Christ is closer than when you believe. Then he said the night is far spent. Night is dark time. Night is a time of darkness, a time of ignorance. Night, a closing out of a day, closing out of an era, a period of time. The night is far spent. The day, Christ is the day star. 
The day is at hand. He was talking about a day back there. It's a day down here. We have a day. The, the, the word of God is constantly uh, uh, talking to us about uh, uh, days and times and what needs to be done in the process of it. And that's why we just keep saying the same thing over and over. Paul said, although you have heard it, I won't be negligent to put you in remembrance. So that's why we keep repeating it, that we can be without fault or without excuse when whatever takes place, take place. The watchmen are clear of their duty because they have sound the alarm. They have constantly put it out in front of uh, the people for them to make the proper decisions with it. Salvation nearer than when we believe the night is far spent, day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Here we are to get rid of all of the dark things, all of the ignorant things, things that will cause us to uh, miss uh, the appearing of Christ, uh, the coming of the Lord. Let us put on the arm of life. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness and chambering and wantonness in strife and envy. And look at all the things here that shows us the different conduct that is taking place in the world today. It took place in that day. It's taking place in this day. See, the things I need to fix, I need to be working on fixing them. Yes, sir. We often say here we have time we just don't have nothing to waste. Right. And that's what most of us do is we waste time. Right. Precious time. Time uh, that a moments and seconds that could mean a lifetime to us. It could mean lifetime to us. Let, let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly, you know, as children of light. Let us, let us walk honestly as in the day. As this day, this light that God has given us. Yes, Lord. Is that John, John, uh, John 5, John 8, rather, I think it is. And verse 12. Yes. John 8 and 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk where at. See, if when you're following close to God, you can't walk in darkness. You, it's impossible to walk close to God and then walk in darkness. Because he just said, if you follow me, you're going to walk in light. He said, because I am the, I'm the light. He says, uh, but shall have the light of life. You shall have the Light of life. It's God. There's something that's going to be given to you. Uh, you're going to have Christ. He's the light of life. And, and so he's admonishing us here, uh, back here, to, to uh, walk in this day, honestly, not rioting. Not get into the spirit of carousing as letting loose. Get that word. I'm going to get these few words here in this 13th. That's shame. Uh, we rioting, excuse me, rioting first. Not in rioting. See, this is referencing a carousal as if letting loose. You know, a reveling, a rioting. You can get into this, this, this letting loose spirit. See, we, we've got to make sure this carousal, we don't let loose. The world is let loose. The world has turned loose. And we got to make sure that we don't let loose. We keep ourselves restrained and refrained. That's right. Because the flesh is the flesh. Your flesh, my flesh, anybody's flesh is the same. That's right. It likes to get loose. And so that's why it's necessary to put this word of God on us. Amen. To reframe us, to put us in a straight jacket, kind of to to keep us in the straight gate, straight, yes, uh, in the narrow way, Amen. Uh, not in rioting. So cut loose, a riot, a letting loose. 
And, and then he said, not in drunkenness. See, uh, again, this drunkenness is an intoxication, uh, whether it is uh, naturally or spiritually. Right. Whatever form of drunkenness, whatever caused you not to be sober. Remember, he said, be sober and vigilant. See, you, you get influenced by your own spirit, uh, your own pride, your own self, or uh, a literal drinking, a drunkenness. All of that that comes up under that heading, yes, it, it denotes that it's no control. You're out of control. Right, right. You're out of control. He said drunkenness, not in chambering. Uh, <laughs> this cohabitation. You know, in the bed, this is uh, uh, what's going on. It ain't no reframe everything. It's your thing. You do what you want to do. You know, uh, it's this, 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 uh, whether it's a male with a male or a female with a female or just a regular fornication or adultery. It's just bed to bed. It's no thing. He said, not with that going on and wantingness. Not with the wantingness here. And that is just filthiness, it's vices. You pulling that word up from licentiousness, lascivious, filthiness, lasciviousness, wantonness. See, it's just a turning loose, unbridled, unbridled lust. We all got lust, don't we? Yes, sir. Lust means desires, but it can be unbridled. It can be out of control. See, God uh, wants a person that have self control. Yes, you see, it, we, we need to have that kind of control over our ourselves and not allow self to have control over us. And, and, and so then he says uh, uh, not chambering and wantonness, not in strife, uh, not in quarreling, get into all kind of quarreling and wrangling <coughs> debates. That's why we don't need to be in all this other stuff out here going on in this world. All these different debates, all this foolishness going on. Foolishness. It genders only strife. Yes, it just keeps stuff going on and going on in your own spirit. You don't have no settlement. You don't have no peace. Right. And Jesus come to give us peace. Yes, sir. He's the Prince of Peace. Yes, sir. Praise God. With strife and then with envy, which is a form of just jealousy and uh, emulation, striving. That's why we have to be constantly mindful that we're not striving against one another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Church is not to be striving with one another. We're on the same team. Yes, sir. We're fighting the same fight. We're fighting the same enemy, which is our own self. Yes, so we don't need to be fighting. We all got something we're dealing with. You know better than me. I know better than you. Right. So if, if, if you ain't fighting this, you're fighting that. So some of you fighting. So what we need to do is try to join in and help one another win. That's what we need to be trying to do. Join in to help one another win. So I, I surely can't look at you because of that. And even though I know that what you just did might not have been right, you're looking at that, something I did that just wasn't right. But I said, Lord, help them recognize that even when you made that mistake, Lord, help them to understand from that mistake what they just done so they can move on from that mistake. I don't know if I said that. Yeah. See, everything is a progressive move. Right. If you're not going forward, you're going back. Yes, you ain't standing still, trust me. You're either going with the flesh or you're going with God. You're not standing still. There's no in-between. There's no purgatory. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You're either moving forward with God or you're moving back in the flesh. Praise God. Getting deeper into the flesh. And so he said, make not, he says, not in strife and envy. And then 14 verse said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision. That tells me that I can make opportunity for me to do things that God said don't do. I can make provision for that. That's true. I can do something that gives allowance for the flesh to have a, a credence and preeminence over uh, what God wants. 
uh, from me. He said to fulfill the lust thereof. And so here we are uh, not wanting to play Russian roulette with our time. Not to waste the time that is important. And uh, I say all the time, and I know it's to be a fact, we don't have our Bible head in our Bible 24 7. We don't, we don't pray 24. Well, we could pray 24 7. You, you know, well, not 24 7, because you ain't praying while you sleep. But you could be in a you could be in an attitude of prayer too, right. constantly. You see, you can be in fellowship with the spirit constantly. Amen. So, but uh, what we're doing is making sure that we're not giving any opportunity for something to take me away from God. Right. My environment is conducive to move me closer to God. My fellowship, everything that I'm doing, I want to make sure that I'm not uh, causing the op the flesh opportunity to get advantage of me and wasting time that I can use for the kingdom. Then there's a scripture here in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And it tells us about time and what time uh, uh, things that it's time to do. And uh, he says, for everything there's a season. And there's a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now there's there's time, uh, there's seasons and times and purposes for everything. There's every, there, there there's allowance for everything under the heaven. And one day I was born 61 years ago. There was a time to be born. Uh, naturally, I was born. Spiritually, I was born. Uh, 40 years ago, right? I was a uh, uh, 30 some years. I was born in the spiritually, born again. Yes, sir. And then there's a time to die. Here, Paul is referencing natural things. Here, he says a time to born, uh, Solomon, and time to die. Uh, a time to plant, time to pluck up that which is planted. So, not her. And some old people here plants. That was a time for you to plant. That was a season to plant. And that's what we need to be really focusing in on is am I putting in things at the proper time? Yes, sir. We're looking for harvests, but we don't plant properly. We don't take the proper time to plant to get the proper harvest. You got to do it at the right time. There's a time when God is asking you to do certain things, to sow certain things, do certain things. If you do that at the time that God is asking you to do, you'll get a harvest from that. Monetarily, spiritually, however so, however it may be, if you find yourself uh, doing that, you know, there's a time to pay attention when I'm preaching. There's a time for that. You know? And if you pay attention, something can be sold into your life. Yes, sir. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a time to plant. I'm a planter. That's what I come to do. I, God called me to plant. Amen. And, 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 and then there's a time to pluck up that which is planted. You'll get the harvest from that. That which is planted. Time to kill. And a time to heal. There's a time to kill things. Now, that could be naturally as well. But that's spiritually here. There are things. It's time to kill certain things in our life. Certain things that we're, we've we been doing that we know that is against God need to die. Yes, right. yes, he tells us that. Romans 8. I'm coming back. Romans 8. 12, 13. Somewhere in that neighborhood. He says, that's my brother. And we are not debtors. To the flesh. I don't owe my flesh nothing. I'm not a debtor to the flesh. To live after the flesh. I don't owe the flesh nothing else. 24 years, really longer than that. I've been dealing with him for 61 years. But when I first come to God, I didn't even, I wasn't even living for God. 
24 years, I was living strictly for the flesh. Yes, sir. Praise God. I have been living for God since that time. Uh, I done lost a few fights and a few battles, but I've still been in the, uh, uh, on the Lord's side. I don't owe my flesh anything. Right. Let me show you what the flesh is. Galatians 5, 16. So you know what flesh is. Galatians 5, 16, I'll be back. This I say, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the what? The flesh. The flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led, cause the walk of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest or revealed. You want to know what the flesh is? This is what it is. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Get lasciviousness. It just means filthiness. I don't want to uh, filthiness. Some of these words that make you speak in tongues, you just want, might want to get filthiness. See that? Filthiness, wantonness, filthiness. That's all it is. It's filthiness of the flesh. All right? Uh, 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 uncleanliness. Then idolatry. Let's get idolatry. See, image is a worship. I wanted to get that for a particular reason because, see, we bow down to things that we don't even know we're worshiping. Right. We, anything that gets more honor than God, uh -huh. it's an idol. You're worshiping that. You, you bow down to that. And so God don't want us to give more credence to some other idol. It could be my car, my house. Uh, uh, a game of whatever it is. God do not want me to be worshiping. That means to adoring. Worship means like a like a dog go to his master and jump up on him and just lick his master. That's what worship means. A dog loves his master. He just jump up on there and just. That's worship. That we bow down to that. Witchcraft. Those are drugs too. They ain't only somebody with a crystal ball trying to read your own future. And let me tell you something. Bring that money to me, I'm, I'll give you your future. I can read your future. I have a gift of that. Bless if you do, damn if you don't. You bring that on in here. That's <laughs> right, amen. Huh? I got the future right here. <laughs> if you don't do it, you're damned. If you do it, you're blessed. That's right. Blessed is the man yes. that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, yes. nor standeth in the way of sinners, Psalm 101, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God, and in his law he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in the season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he said, but the ungodly is not so. It's like the shaft that the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, neither the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Bring me that money here. <laughs> Just told you your future. Bring it in. Praise God. Hey, Amen. Yes, well, we want something quick and something that uh, tickles our flesh. Yes, but this is not a flesh patting and uh, uh, a tickling way. Yes, this is a suffering way. This is a denial way. Yes, Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Yeah. Take up his cross and follow me. That's this is a denial way. This is a killing way. Praise God. This is a, this is what I'm trying to get to back in Romans 8, 12 here. This is a way of killing, mortifying. It's a time to kill. That's how I got here. Uh, oh, let me, I was I was in Galatians. Let me give you the rest of those. That's all right. I'm gonna try to keep on moving. 
witchcraft. That he even got to deal with pharmaceutical. Let me show you that. You can get into drugs. Yeah. Pharmacia. Pharmacy. See that? Medication. That's what they're trying. You know the pharmaceutical is one of the money making this operation a day. And when you get up under that, it's under an influence. That's got a spell on it. That only, that ain't that woman on that broom just riding there with the hat on. <laughs> Come on. There's some people back there, uh, and our mind under a spell that we got to have it. And sometimes we do have to have it. <laughs> sometimes we do have to have it, and sometimes we get addicted to it. They make it, they, they, they are legal drug dealers. <laughs> they're locking everybody else up, but they get, they don't put the they lock them up because they don't want the other people to get it. That's, right. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the revelation of it. Amen. Amen. Why you just like lottery and all the rest of it. They got tired of them wheels getting it. They said, let us just set up stuff and we get it. So this government, let me keep moving here. Hatred. Hatred. This is part of the flesh. We got to know what to kill. You got to know what to kill. You got to kill hatred. That's a that's an evil spirit. Hate to get on you. And you are hate. And God don't want us to. There's certain things God wants us to hate. And then there's a saying God don't want you to hate. Right. We need to know what to hate. Hate evil. Amen. Hate what's wrong. Praise God. Variance. Get that word variance. At odds. <clears throat> See? Debate, wrangling, contention. Strife. We don't want to have that going. We gotta, we gotta kill that. <coughs> Stuff always going. That's why you can look at news all day long. Something always going on. Right. Some wrangling going on. Something. Something's going on. Emulation, striving against one another. Wrath, sedition, heresy, envy, murders, drunk. You can murder. You can murder. You can you can envy. You can be jealous over somebody that's being blessed. God promised to bless you too. Amen. Amen. That's right. If you can stand it. The reason why God wants to bless some folk because they can't stand to be blessed. As soon as God blessed them, they was on the knees praying. Next thing you know, what happened to them? They got a few dollars in their pocket. Yeah, I've heard. I've had people right here in time past. They ain't here now. <laughs> and let me keep moving. Go. Envy, jealousy. I'm not jealous of you. All I got to do is keep living right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God gonna bless me. In fact, I'm blessed right now. Right. You know, if you want, you want to turn what blessed is. I got my right mind and know who I'm serving. Amen. What I'm working on. I am blessed. Amen. Praise God. The fool of Raymond, he promised to bless us with. Praise God. That's stuff. That's the addition. The seeking the kingdom first. All these other things be added. But he want me to seek him first. He said, I add this other stuff to you. Solomon, what you want? I just want to know how to come in and go out. Since you asked not for riches and all that, he said, I'm going to give you what you need, the wisdom, how to go in and out, and I'm going to give you the rest of the stuff that goes along with it. Because it's stuff to God. He wants stewards. He wants good stewards. If he can bless you, he wants you to be a good steward over what he blessed you with. Bless me with. Praise God. Murders. Natural murder. Get some man you want to kill somebody spiritually and natural. You murder folk with your tongue. Yes, sir. It's a lot of way to be a murderer. Drunkenness again. Partying again. 
And then he puts three words in there, which is very important, and such like. Anything that's relative, anything that is on the same line, that's called the flesh. All right, let's go back to where I was before I identified that Romans 8. That we don't, therefore, brother, we are not debtors to the flesh. Now, all those things saying, I'm, I don't owe none of that anything. That's why we went to Galatians 6, I mean 5, to show that we're not debtors to none of those things. I don't owe uh, the flesh none of those things. To walk around jealous, hateful, adultery, fornication, drunk, emulation, striving, all these I don't owe, all that need to be killed. For if you live after all of those things, what's going to happen? Don't fool yourself. I think we talked about it a few days ago. You're going to die. But if ye through the Spirit do, give me that word mortify. That's why I come there for. To kill. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. To kill, become dead, cause to be put to death, kill. Yes, yes, Alright, back to Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time to kill. Are y'all following me? There's a time to kill, and then there's a time to heal. There's been wounds, and there's time to heal, to be healed from those things. Sometimes we like that, we like Charlie Brown, uh, what that guy named? Linus. Give me that. That blanket there. You can get it back later. <laughs> Every time you see lions, you're walking around. Dirt flying everywhere. Pig pen. Pig pen. He's dragging that. Lion head. Oh, lion was a blanket then. Well, that dirt jumping from it too. That's still dirt jumping from it. So we got both of them in there. Both been dragging stuff a long time. You ain't tired of dragging that around? Oh, but you don't know how they hurt me. You ain't tired of dragging that around? Uh, unforgiveness. Huh? Bitterness. Just dragging that around. You know, you don't understand. I understand if you let it go, God's got something better put in your hand. That old shot, yeah. Oh, we go around dragging that thing. Praise God. Take up your bed and walk. It's a time to be healed of that. It's a time to be delivered from that. Regardless. Regardless. It ain't in that. It's really not that important. And once you get healed of it, you will see why in the world I waited all this time to get healed of that. You ain't the only one who got wounded. Right. Do you know wound had a purpose in it? Uh -huh. uh, Proverbs. Blueness of the wound. See, he, 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 he used it to, to cleanse the evil. I'm glad for the word of God tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> got the answers right there. We got. We got every answer to every situation. And I don't give no man that much credit had that much sense. That was God. Well, that Proverbs 20, 30. The blueness of the womb. It cleanses away evil. Praise God. It said blows that wounds cleanse away evil. There's a mystery to that. Yes. He said a blow, the Amplifier says, the blows that wound cleanse away evil and strokes for correction reach to the innermost parts. God knew that. He knows you needed that wound. Yes. He knows you needed that correction. Yes. 
You didn't say anything. None of us say we need to be hurt like that. But you didn't say that either when you was running that person down. You didn't say that either when you was doing what you was doing towards somebody else, hurting somebody else. But God has a cleansing element to a role. Praise God. And you can be raised up from that. In the name of Jesus. Did you get that? Yeah. Joseph didn't think he needed it either, but he needed every bit of it. God had a plan. He said, but look what he said at the end. You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Who did he credit it for? It? God. Job said, praise God. Should I not get good at the hand of God? Not evil also. And Job said when they got through with the conversation with God, he looked back and said, look at here. I thought I knew God, but I sure know him now. I'm studying here, Brother Gunther was saying about that father. See, I, I tell you yesterday, see you, you, see, you can get on some certain things you can talk about. But certain things you don't know about until God keeps uh, fusing you with certain situations, showing you certain things, taking you through certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why preaching ain't just uh, getting up and getting a briefcase, putting on a tie and just talking about a whole lot of stuff. It's called ministry. That's why I call ministry. Yeah, yeah. Serving people. Right. Serving that need. That's right. Thank you. Not just a lot of word. Yeah. Ministry. Get down to where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And that's why God, as I told these preachers so many times, God gonna beat the devil out to you first. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. He's gonna pound on you. That's good. You think you're gonna get him talking about David saying. <laughs> Elijah went to the brook. <laughs> you know, I used to have a little hook going on. I still can do a little bit of it if I need to. But you're going to go to the brook too, and your stuff going to dry up too. And then you're going to say, Albert said. <laughs> you got to talk about what Elijah said. Because you've been there. That's right. You felt it. You you went through the process. You walked through the valley of the shadow Come of death. Yeah. Amen. You walked through the flood. You went through the fire. Yeah. It means something then. When you're talking, it gets out there. When you're talking about what David said, it's just doing his head. But when you got your experience, it goes out that people, it's rather felt. They told me down in Texas, it's rather felt than tell. You feel it more than you talk about it. It's a feeling. It's an inspiration. Everything is spirit. Praise God. So that's why God takes us through. That's why you have those experience. Because somewhere you're going to tell somebody else. Child, I understand. Let me tell you something. I ain't just talking about what I heard. I'm telling you what I've been through. And look, this is what happened. I cried and I sobbed like you, but one day I came to reasoning that God knew better. And God knew what I needed. And as I stood there and I called on God and I got a spirit of thankfulness and I got into a spirit of rejoicing and know that trouble don't last always. I waited upon the Lord and he renewed my strength. I mounted up with the scripture. I, I, I don't see that. Praise God. This is what this training is all about. I'm running now and I'm not weary. I'm walking now and I'm not faint. Hallelujah. See, these are the times here. You go through these different times. Time to kill. Time to heal. It's time to be healed. That's right. Time to break down. Time to pluck up. Praise God. I, it takes too much time here today to go through. But it's time. Every one of these times is a time. And I believe it's time right now for us to stop wasting time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Because that's what we're talking about here today. Playing Russian roulette, flipping the gun and pulling the trigger, seeing how much I can get away with. Why play it? Let's do what the word of God says. Let's fix what's wrong. If it's wrong, fix it. I, I, I don't know how. Just fix it. Fix it according to the word of God. Not according to your cousin. Not according to your child if I was you stuff. Fix it according to the word of God. Because child, they don't know what they're talking about. If they ain't talking according to the word of God, child don't know what she talking about. Yeah, I don't know, child, there's always somebody tell you, child, if I was you. Stop listening to folks talking about child if I was you. Stop listening to what God said. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. Can the weapon of our warfare not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, things that got you bound. Casting down your reasoning. Imagination means reasoning. See, child, if I was you, give me that word imagination. That reasoning. We don't need nobody's reasonings when we got the word of God. Amen. See, computation, reasoning, conscience, thoughts. Oh, they're doing they're giving your thoughts. If they're not giving you chapter and verse, line upon line, precept upon precept. Yes. Child, you going about your business. <laughs> hmm? That's right. Yeah, because the word of God says me to get down and uh, cast it down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything somebody tell me that I can't find in this book, throw it down. Right. It's a high thing. Everything somebody try to counsel you with that's not in Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, means that it stacks up according to the word of God. Get rid of it. Amen. Because the only thing going to stand when the tides get high is the word of God. The only thing that cause you to surf is the word of God. When the waves come, you need the word of God to get on them legs and ride them out. Not somebody's opinion. Not Dr. Spark. Dr. Jesus. Hmm? Bring the captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What do it mean? Bring every thought into what Christ said. My God, this don't stop. It just keeps going. I'm not going to stop. Why well, play Russian roulette with your life <coughs> when you don't have to? Why do you play maybe I can get by when all the people from the flood all the way down to this point haven't got by? That's right. That's right. Nobody Everybody that didn't do it the way God said paid the ultimate price for sin, which is death. Yeah. How do you think we're going to get through? We're not going to get through. What makes this time differ from the past time? What disobeyed God? Every disobedience. Mm -hmm. See that go to the word of God. That's it. Receive a just recompense or reward. Right. Right. Every. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me that. I'm headed to my seat because it don't stop. I keep telling you, don't stop. You keep going. That's why you can't. You can't preach an no everlasting message. Give nobody no everlasting life. Yes, sir. Anybody say? Yes, sir. Every disobedience, I believe it was Hebrews, just recompense or reward. I appreciate that today. We're not playing Russian roulette in our life. Two, 
Hebrews uh, 2, verse 1. I'm going to start there. Therefore we ought to give a more earnest heed to the things in which we heard, lest at any time we let them slip. That's an interesting verse. It's like a big ship master. The captain driving a big ship. If he don't pay the earnest heed, he goes right past the place where he's supposed to go in and dock at. He won't give him orders unless he let him slip. That means he goes past the place he's supposed to be docked. Therefore, we ought to get him more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. This is what the, this is what the Amplified says. Since, since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard, lest any time we drift past them and slip away. Go right past the place that we're supposed to be pulling in at. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression, that transgression is every breaking or violating of the law, Every transgression received and disobedient received a just recompense or reward. In other words, whatever, according to the crime, according to the penalty, it received it. You know, that whatever it was, the message given through angels of the law and what they failed to uh, appropriate, uh, they received the penalty for it. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which began, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it? I'm thankful. I'm graciously. Uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm thankful for the grace that God has put on our lives. And all I'm saying with all of what I've said is that let, while I play with it, let's, let's get it right. Let's go ahead and hit the bullseye. Let's go on, get on in this here and do it because time is winding up. Praise God. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
scripture in uh, Ecclesiastes talking about there's a time for everything, a time and a season for everything. I was thinking about something that I had seen on Facebook that really quickened me. Uh, when I saw it, it was a this girl showed her spread in her uh, bullet journal. And for those that know what a bullet journal is, it's like a planner mixed with a diary, and uh, they do it very creatively. They make all these creative uh, inserts and whatever, and it pertains to their life and what's going on at the time. And she had lost her baby, and uh, so she made a spread in her journal that said she was saying goodbye to one chapter of her life or one. Um, idea where she was going and she was now moving on into an she was like turning a leaf or turning a page in her in her uh, she was no longer going to be mourning or whatever but she was turning the page and moving on from that and when I saw that it really quickened me because not I know that not everybody has that ability to do that I know that a lot of people get stuck in the past and I was thinking when brother Adams used that scripture there's a time and a season for everything what if we get stuck in a time and we don't move on and it's time to harvest and we're still trying to plant or we're still, still trying to dig up the dirt and it's time to take in the tomatoes. That doesn't work. We've got to move on. And I remember, I mean, I've had so many deaths in my family. My father died, my mother died, and uh, I had my both sets of grandparents died and aunts, uncles, cousins. A lot of people died in my life and I realized through it all that life goes forward. It does not go back, it does not go behind you, it goes forward. And I recently had one of my Facebook friends, her husband died and she is you know, looking at pictures and she's stuck being the wife of the man that is no longer there. And I know that the worse you look back, the harder it is. It is devastatingly hard to look to the past when there is nothing there. And God showed me when my husband died, he had showed me that he was a God of today, that grace was for today, and that there was nothing in the past. He's not a God of yesterday, and I cannot look to yesterday. And I had had a dream that when, um, when my husband died, I had had a dream that I stepped through this threshold of this door, and as soon as I stepped through the threshold, it was like these great big old doors were shutting behind me, and they shut so close behind me, it was like they almost pinched me, you know. They literally was shutting so close, and they were huge steel doors. They were not to be gone back. You couldn't go back. It was these huge, big old steel doors that went, whoo, and I heard the sound, the thunder of those doors shutting and closing. And when they shut and closed, it was forever. And they pin almost pinched me. They were so close behind me that they almost pinched me in my dream. And I knew that God was saying, it's over. Chris is dead. Don't look back. You look forward. And God helped me through that. I'm telling you, I would have lost my mind looking back. I could not go back to yesterday. But God had something right on the other side of that for me. I wouldn't have been able to receive if I would have still been looking back. Yeah. And I was just thinking, if we get stuck in some season, that it's not that season anymore. We will miss what God has for us in the future. I had to share that today. I miss him. I miss him so much. But I hope that when I die, you'll be able to feel the spirit coming off me like I did him. My God, I've never felt that on any man. He'd come down every other week and I'd shave his head. And it kind of aggravated me, I'm being honest. Because it was painful. Cheryl told me, you're going to be thankful one of these days. <laughs> I could feel the spirit so much off of that guy. And I used to watch him. 
he'd get up and he'd stumble for words and he'd try to preach and try to testify and he'd stumble for words. I wish I had a tape of his last time getting up. He went down to the campground looking for a healing. I would have done the same. My God, you can't be too full of the Spirit of God. You can't be too full of it. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, we all have that. Jesus had that. And he overcome by the things that he suffered. But my God, watching Chris suffer. How you doing today, Chris? I'm finer than a frog hair split four ways. Oh, I used to just shake my head and just believe. I knew he couldn't see me. He was dumb blind. Oh my God, to have a spirit like he had. Meekness. Meekness. That man was so meek. Hey, I grew up with him. I fought him. He didn't hold me with that crippled arm and he didn't knock the snot out of me. You know, God, I miss him. But to have that meekness, you know, to be picked on by everybody. I've been picked on a lot, but I used to whoop them back. You know, I'd kick them in the shins when I was a little bitty. I'd have my cowboy boots on. And I'd, Whoa! God, I miss him. And I'm just thankful to be here today. I don't get to come up here as much as I want to. I don't get to feel the Spirit of God as much as I want to. I'll go back tomorrow and they'll pick on me. They'll make fun of me. They'll try and engage me in their nasty sense of humors. You know, they're just lucky that they got the company protecting them. <laughs> yeah, because I guess the old Adam rise up. I still got old Adam. I'm not. Time to kill. Time to kill. My God, I wish I didn't have to be around the world. You know? I'm just thankful to be here. But when Chris died, I saw a man I never seen sitting in that chair. I looked at him and I thought, I never knew this man. You know? It's rough going on. But I'm just thankful to be here and I thank God for what he's brought me through. He ain't gonna give up on me yet. He's the author and the finisher of my salvation. I may not do a lot of things a lot of people think I should do. You know? When I was young, I went where I would. I couldn't go to church, I quit my job. I couldn't go to the meeting, I quit my job. You know, now I've got house payments and might need a new car and need a new truck and I don't wanna I don't wanna keep working, I wanna retire. I wanna go to meetings. I wanna drench myself in this because that's the only way I'm ever gonna make it. You know, shoot back in back in Little Rock when I lived with the minister, lived with Brother Tucker, and drove him around. I was in meetings just about every day for a few weeks. My keister was getting tired. I was either sitting in a pew or I was sitting in a car. You know? But I heard a lot of the Word of God. I heard a lot of the Word of God. And I, I was one of them guys sitting up on the platform he called a scriptorian. And we used to race each other to see who could get to that scripture first. We didn't have a little iPod or smartphone. We had the concordance. And you had to be pretty yeah. slick. <laughs> He'd get up there like Brother Adams. He'd start going. You know, Brother Adams gets going pretty good. I thank the Lord for Brother Adams. I thank the Lord for the church up in Benton Harbor. You know, when I first come up here, I don't, I mean, I shouldn't keep bringing it up. But I was looking for hope. I didn't get what I wanted, but I found the church. I'd never been up here before. No one ain't for sure I was in the right place. But once you feel this spirit, once you hear the scriptures, you know this is it. This is it. This is that which fell at Pentecost. 
Yeah, I didn't mean to stand up here and say a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I know you are getting tired of them. Been good. Thank God for memories. That don't mean we can't think about the memories, but we got to keep moving. Ain't that right? That's and right. the Lord. Memories are good. We always That's think right. back about times we had with our loved ones, but God wants us to keep moving forward in Him. Yes, so to, uh, take up uh, off, receive offering, but let's remember 